Twitch chat Wardog message over. Welcome back, guys, to another more War Monday. We are, of course, going to be picking up with our Jung Jung Let's Roleplay campaign with sponsor and officer in effect for viewers, followers, and subs. And we are on day five. Now, today I'm not going to forget that I don't play with the overlay on. Yes, hello Doomsday. M nice to meet you again too. whoop -de do Apologies for the delayed start, guys. I was on time to be starting at 7 and then uh, somebody called me at 1 minute to 7 and the call was supposed to be a very brief something and it turned into something much longer. So that thing wasn't finished. I did cut it short in order to actually come do the stream. But, you know, like when conversations that are supposed to be swift start to roll it's kind of hard to think is it going to stop here is it going to keep going i don't know so yeah i was in that for 15 minutes and then kind of went eh, no i uh, i have a stream to do and this is now too far beyond so let's get back into uh the recap for day five of the jung jung roleplay campaign uh we are not in great stead we have 185 copper in the treasury. We are earning t earning 263 per season. We are <laughs> making minus one food. Uh, we are at war with Gongsunzan and Kongrong. Uh, one on each side. The war against Kongrong looking like it might be slightly better than the war against Gongsunzan. Which of course we were dealt a stinging blow in uh, losing Chu Gong in a battle at the end of day four uh, Jung Jung being wounded her army being uh, decimated for lack of a better word we need to make some peace with someone then utterly fuck someone up and make them a tributary rest in peace Chu Gong yeah so I can see that we've got David in here who is now playing as Gan Ning we've got well in fact let's do the spiel guys let's do the spiel so, as I mentioned, uh, and as is the case all the time with our Let's Roleplay campaign, Sponsor and Officer is in effect, which means that anyone from a sub, follower, or even viewer at this point can sponsor one of our officers. And what that means is you get to choose their skills when they level up, so these things here. Uh, you get to try and guide their career. Do you want them to be a military officer or a civil officer? You get to put your input in when there's faction decisions to be made, and you get to kind of wield some influence in the area around your character. The sponsored officers we have so far, nobody's allowed to sponsor Jung Jung, because she is the faction leader. Yin Li is sponsored by Rill, who I don't believe we have in the chat. Lu Jung is sponsored by Sarah, or Staring Stars, who I also don't believe is in the chat. Uh, Song Chen is sponsored by David, or Reigns Almighty, who is in the chat. Shun Yu is sponsored by Doomsday. Is he sponsored by Doomsday? Why have I forgot? Tyler Tyler and Doomsday. I don't know what it is with you guys. Like, every flicking time. Let me find it. Sponsored officers. Shun Yu. Yeah, it is Doomsday. It's Tyler's Jujun. I don't know why I can't get those two straight. So yes, Shun Yu sponsored by Doomsday who is in also in the chat, and Jujun, who is sponsored by Tyler or Dead of Pool, who doesn't look like is in the chat. Uh, Shu Rao is currently available for sponsorship. Sponsorship. Why can't I? Sponsorship. There you go. Uh, tai Shi Tzu is also available for sponsorship. And Gan Ning is sponsored by Ryan, also known as Cluffix, who is in the chat and was the person sponsoring Chu Gong until his untimely demise. So, we should be at the end of the turn. Everybody's moved. Everything we can do has been done. Uh, David, you may need to uh, somewhat help me decide what Lu Jung's forces are going to be doing. Because I don't believe we have Sarah. So, uh, peace with Kong Rong. Is this, th is this like the episode where we just wimp out and peace with everybody? 
after I've been like, hey, maybe we should make peace with this person who's offering us a lot of money, and you were all like, nah, bro, death or tributary! And then suddenly it's like, oh shit, we can die, uh, maybe we make peace? Is that what's happening? Is everybody suddenly uh, turning around? Let's end the turn and proceed onwards. Oh, that's convenient. Gong Sun Zan will sign peace with us for 2,845 copper. It's a shame that he's taken Yanmen Lumberyard. Yeah. He's making up the difference. It's, ma it's basically a, it's a good deal for us, in essence. Uh... Yeah. We wouldn't be able to get our territory back from him. Divide and conquer where bandits we encourage foes to put down the sword whilst we mutilate the others. Take it. I wanted to beat his ass but we need his money. We can stab him in the back later. When our southern lands are secure we can march back up, kick the door down and reclaim it. Take it. So now everybody wants peace. Mm -hmm. I see how it is. I see how it is, you guys. Y'all wouldn't let me make peace last week, but suddenly everybody's for it. I don't actually think we have a choice with Gong Sun Zan. He has a whole stack army here. This one's beaten up, but it will recover probably about the same pace as it takes us. So I don't feel like we've got any option, to be perfectly honest. We have to take this. I'm literally playing a new character now. Uh, that is true. Yin Shu is requesting military support against Lady Wu, who is way off to the south and probably no direct threat to us. Um, previously, when he asked us to attack Cao Cao, uh, we rejected, but then we were forced to anyway because the majority of the coalition said yes, which was him. So I feel like we may as well say yes and make Cao Cao, Yuan Shu and Liu Yao happier with us rather than rejecting and I guess, yeah, not getting that benefit. So we'll say yes because I'm pretty sure it's yes either way. It just depends on what we say to him. So we just saw Zhang Yen arriving somewhere in Herdong. Good stuff. Ultimatum, generalship. Why do you continue to overlook me? My martial leadership skills are known to all. Give me command of one of our armies or I shall take my abilities elsewhere. Then one day you may find yourself facing me on the other side of the battlefield. Interesting. Gan Ning is uh, making threats. Ryan making threats. Well, David, uh, Tsung Chen is the Chancellor. Uh, we only have two of the four options because we don't have the correct traits for the other two. So either we ignore him or we pay him off. I would most enjoy the chance to fight at your side, but a warrior at heart I must seek battle. If you will not give me the chance, I must seek it elsewhere. Might as well pay him off to get some happiness for a bit. That's what I'm thinking too. Partly because it's Ryan's new character and I really don't want to encourage him to just disappear and Ryan lose a second one. But also because it's Gan Ning, he's he is genuinely tough and I do want to keep him. You have other plans for this enthusiastic individual. You decided to subdue their aspirations, for now, with a bribe. Alright. So now we're not at war in the northeast, at least for a small period of time. And for that reason... 
Jung Jong is immediately going to start making her way west. Not in a forced march, because we do still want to be replenishing en route. But she is going to go that way. What else have we got markers for? Uh, Ju Jun's loyalty is quite low. Taishi Sir's loyalty is getting lower because of lack of purpose. Although we do still have an assignment we could give out. Gan Ning's loyalty is quite low. Has he got? Is it? Huh. Okay, interesting. Yin Li is 46. Okay. So, she, her, Yanmen, and Ye can. Uh, no, Ye's not telling me about upgrades, it's telling me that stuff is still damaged. Income from peasantry and food production. Uh, we'll repair it. That's actually... That's costing us six food. That building. It might be an idea. Because if we repaired that and then flipped it to the irrigated farms, it would produce food instead. I'm going to repair that. And we'll see where we stand next turn. Can we send Taisha to uh, for an assignment? Yes, we can, David. You especially can, because you're not far from the capital and you are the Chancellor. So Taisha Tsu's assignments are supervised construction, which gives 10% construction cost reduction, one turn less construction time, 25% less building upkeep. Uh, he can also do the bandit patrols assignment, but not in Tai Yuan, because Gan Ning already is. Or he can counteract corruption, which lowers corruption by 50% in the local commandery. We only have 4% in the capital commandery, so we don't have a big corruption problem right now. I don't know how much building, building upkeep we actually pay at the minute. Not all of the buildings at the start cost upkeep like as best as I can tell nothing in Tai Yuan currently costs us upkeep do supervised construction are we doing that in Tai Yuan or a different commandery Tai Yuan Okay. Assignments, Tai Shutsu, supervised construction. Away he goes. Right. Um, apart from people who are still a bit miffed, the only other thing we have left on this turn is Lu Jung's army movement. And now, I haven't spotted Sarah in the chat. And I'm um, quite sure she's on a call with a friend, so it's possible we won't see her. At least not for the beginning of the stream, maybe not at all. Which means, David, Song Chen is kind of acting as the, uh, the replacement commander. I'm not going to bother actually swapping them around. Because it's not an official thing, it's just because Sarah's not here. But you need to make decisions for this army now, basically. Move us slightly southwest. How far is slightly? You can move up to our border, you could move halfway down this valley, you could move to the river, or just across the river. Up to the border, okay. If you give me sort of a general idea of what it is you're trying to do, 
that might make it easier. Like, I don't know if you're trying Hello, to just advance cautiously so you can see the fog of war move, or if this is as far as you intend to advance. to see if you can find Jiang Yin. Okay, we can do that. So I'm I'm assuming by that that you mean you're just going to edge forward until you can see what where he is. So you are now going to be crossing Hello. into Kong Rong's territory. Uh, Jiang Yin doesn't look like he's in Herdong because we can see the town, which means we should be able to see any armies in it. Still can't see him. My guess, because he was on the river, it's highly unlikely that he's come off the river and got anywhere near the town. If he's, he's either still on the river, or he's along sort of the bank right now. And we'll probably see him march in there next turn. That would be my guess. But you've now extend, expended all your moves, and we haven't found him, so that's going to be the end of the turn. Yin Tan wants us to give him a jade sculptor and a wooden fish for military access agreement. I'm feeling like that's going to be a big nope. Oh shit. I didn't see David say go halfway between our border and the river. Apologies David. I, if it helps, you're not in any danger. Um, there's no army going to be close enough to attack you, so you can always turn around on the next turn. Reject, reject, he can go to hell. Sounds like we're saying no to you in Tan. Okay, so Kong Rong's had his turn, and we still haven't spotted Jung Yin. Cao Cao left the coalition of Liu Bei. Interesting. Oh dear. General in need. An enemy messenger arrives with news that one of your generals has allowed themselves to be captured by the enemy. As you read, the messenger awaits to return with your decision. This happens periodically. Sometimes random officers in armies will be captured and essentially you pay 500 copper or they die. So, given that uh, Lu Jung is technically in command of the army that Song Chen's in, she's the local person, there's no way that his wife is not going to pay that money, so... We'll pay the money. Seems like Gan Ning is returning next turn from his assignment. Um, oh, I need to move Jung Jong as well. Uh, David, I need to know what your plans are for winter. And there's not currently too much we can do given how little money we've got. Apparently, on ping. Oh no, it's warning me about the rebellion that's going to happen. 
in three turns if we don't do something. Right, if we go to year and say what would it cost us? I didn't even what what was the price for that? 947 662. Okay, so for 662 copper I'm going to swap this food trader to irrigated farms which it will reduce our income but not to a negative and it will balance balance out the food which is probably the best option right now. That's exactly what I am just doing, Ryan. That's the buildings we repaired was these two. Uh, on ping. I'm going to exempt on ping from. Where is on ping? Yeah, there. I'm going to exempt them from tax for a few turns. It is going to lower our food dramatically, but it is going to replenish their public order, which is not doing well. And then the other one is she her but we're going to have two armies over this way so we might be able to fight that one when the rebellion occurs can you take a look at what those buildings do of course you can so the one that we currently have in this slot this first slot is the food trader which is pop growth minus six food but makes 220 income from peasantry what we're converting it to is irrigated farms which gives pop growth plus three po food production and only 110 income from peasantry so essentially you can either produce three food and 110 income or you can double your income but it costs you six food instead so we're swapping those back the other one that we repaired is farm supply storage which is 75 percent food production and 25 percent income to peasantry Which is interesting to say the least, given that it favours food production at the cost of income, and this is not a particularly particularly food productive settlement. So you're taking away the one that produces food but less money. No, I'm taking away the one that costs us food for more money, and instead I'm taking the one that produces food but for less money. We're converting from the bad one to the good one. For our situation, at least. This is what it is now, the lit one. What it's changing to is the one that says upgrading. I did click the good one, I clicked the circle. Currently, it's still this building, because you can't change it instantly. It takes a turn to do. So it's still this building, but we told it to change, so next turn it will be different. So, David, I still need orders for Lu Jung's army. Could you have the one that increased food production by 25% and the, w and the one we're changing this to? I'm not sure I understand the question. Oh, do you mean this one? Do you mean the farm supply? Yeah, because they're two separate buildings. Whenever I open a building, if you look up here, whichever one is highlighted is kind of the group, the building group. You can only have one building out of a building group. So even though this has got two paths, you can't have that and that on two separate slots. You only get one out of this slot. But if you look, if it will change properly, that one is actually the land development slot the two that we were looking at so this one over here which is the one that's doing 75% food production is a different different building group how are you doing on military supplies and need more money yes I know we need more money uh, military supplies you're about to lose this red chunk you will still have the brown chunk it is as it says there, you're losing 30 for being in hostile territory, minus 25 because of it being winter, essentially. 
and 5 because of the terrain we're in, which is then weighed up against the 22 from characters and 8 from reforms that you've got, which gives you a net loss of 30. So you're losing 30 supplies and you have 100. So you'll be down to 70. But next season you won't lose 25 of those. So you would only lose 5. Basically winter is a is a shit season to campaign in. But you're already doing it now. So you <laughs> this turning back at this point to save supplies doesn't make any sense. The way I typically do it is I don't launch... Like if I'm facing a campaign, I won't leave until spring. Because leaving in the winter just costs you 25, 30 supplies for no real reason. You want to take Herdong. Okay. Well, it's a large town, so it should be relatively easy for you to do. You've got a low predicted casualties. Um, 3,000 against 960. They have four units. So to be perfectly honest, that feels like a delegate win to me. Yep, delegate. Yeah. What happened to our food, Doomsday? I exempted a region that was producing six food from tax, which means they don't have to pay us food, because otherwise there was going to be a revolt. Uh, David, what are we doing with Herdong? Loot and occupy. Okie doke. So Lu Jung has captured the town of Herdong. Can't see Zhang Yen anywhere, so he may have got off the river and gone towards Chang'an. That seems the most likely at this point. But he could also be somewhere in Yuan Tan's territory down here. Alright. That's more or less what we can achieve this turn, so we will end the turn here. There's Zhang Yen. And there's the second Kong Rong army. The Obiao is willing to give us 61 copper if we give him the Book of Songs, the Discourses of the States and a Wooden Fish for a non-aggression pact. I mean, I'll get people's opinion on this, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to tell him no. Fuck him, says David. Also, guys, don't forget, if you do have anything you want to say, especially if you're already sponsoring an officer, three dots and I will wait for you to type it out, if it's going to be a particularly long one. And if you have anything you want to ask about what your, your character's doing, what's going on around you, whether you can affect any buildings or anything, feel free to ask. Essentially, the way that I want to play this is as long as there's a feasible roleplay influence around your character, you can make decisions, provided we can afford them. Cow's here. Hey, Cow, welcome to stream. How is your Monday going, mate? Not worth it. So... We are into spring of 207. Oh great, Liu Bei has invited Gong Sun Zan into his coalition. Gong Sun Zan has declared, declared war on Gao Gan. Liu Dai has requested Gong Sun Zan join the war against Yen Tan. Not really interested in that shit. The Sleeping Dragon! For those of you familiar with the Romance of the Three Kingdoms novel, Word reaches you that the great Zhuge Liang, self-styled sleeping dragon, after the ridge near to his home, offers his considerable talents to Liu Bei. Couple people there available to recruit. Right, now we're making six food and positive money and we have a treasury, which is nice. What happens if I... Okay, so we can also add Anping back into the tax bracket. That's very nice. So, 
Public order more or less restored. Tai Yuen still struggling a tiny bit, but nothing immediate. And we are currently only at war with, well, our only neighbour is Kong Rong. However, Jiang Yen has three retinue army with only one unit missing. Guan Ying Ming, Xi Xiong Rui, and himself. And then there's a smaller force led by Dong Xi with Gong Sun Gong and Wang Shi. So David, you're going to need to uh, decide how you're going to deal with that, or if you're going to deal with that. I'm going to keep Jung Jong moving for the time being. Do, 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 do. Right. Um, Taishitsu satisfaction is still in a bad place. Garning's satisfaction is a very low. He is, of course, now not on his assignment, and we do have one available. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is, since Jung Jang's actually pretty close to the capital, I'm just going to have Jung Jang order Garning to start doing bandit patrols in Herdong Commandery. We are going to repair what we've got in Herdong. I think. Well, actually, technically, that's up to you, David. If you want to cancel that decision, let me know. Because you're in Herdong. How strong is Zhang Yan compared, Zhang Yan compared to you? Well, if you just mean you versus him, he is arguably... You could potentially beat him, but if I had to put like percentages on it, I'd say it's like 60-40 in his favour. But that's if Dong Shi's army's not involved. With Dong Shi's army getting involved as well, you're probably looking at a 30% chance of you beating both of them, if that. Son's arrived in the stream. Welcome to the stream, Son. How are you doing? Wait, I'm the closest one to tie you in. I have infinite power. Um, excuse the fuck you, uh, Shun Yu, but you are not closer to Tai Yuan than Jung Jong because you are up there and she is there and Tai Yuan is there. So no, you are not the closest to Tai Yuan. Nice try though. Just another chilled Monday doing dishes right now, Cal. Well, I mean, I feel like you could pick a better soundtrack to do dishes to than, than the... To the more war monday stream but i'm glad that that's what you've chosen i am better suited to war hunting bandits is below me how much of jujun's retinue can we fill without going negative probably not a lot of it and also don't forget the troops that come in will be reduced and have to muster In terms of recruitment, if you're looking at just... It depends what units you want. Um, feck's sake, shut up. Trying to hide from the ginger preggers. We got some new Ikea shit for the little one. Now she's fuming because One Piece was nicked. Oh dear. Oh dear. So, unfortunately, Jujun as a vanguard specialises in shock cavalry, which are expensive. Which is the, the red ones. But if you're just looking at boosting the number of troops in your army, you know, the militias from melee and, and spear and missile are actually pretty cheap. Give you two Sabre Militia. Still got two slots in his retinue.
you've then also got the choice of whether you're staying in Herdong or doing something else. One more, okie do. When you're looking at this panel, by the way, the number on the top is how much it costs in lump to recruit the unit, and the one on the bottom is how much it costs to upkeep them, if, it, if anybody is unaware. So essentially, this one is going to come out of the first number, and this one is really going to affect the number in brackets. Stay in Herdong. It's a brave move. I'm fairly sure yeah they cannot reach her dong in one turn but what you could end up having happen here is dong shi lands on the north side of this river jong yen lands on the south side of it and if you're not careful dong shi is going to cut off your route of withdrawal back towards tai yuen honey said <laughs> thank god david's been commanding your army in absence um, David has decided to push south and has captured Herdong, which we were just discussing. He's just recruited three extra Sabre Militia for Ju Jun's retinue, because oh, Zhang Yen is here on the river with an almost full army minus one unit, but Dong Shi oh, is also on the river here with a, well, a crappy force on its own, but boosting Zhang Yen, it's not to be scoffed at. Harris, how are you doing, buddy? Welcome to the stream. How's your Monday going? So, garrison for the town will be four... Oh, I don't know if it's four, actually. Yeah, it's four units, but they're still replenishing because David only just took the town. So he was just about to make the decision to stay in Herdong, and I was just sort of speculating as to what the Kong Rong forces' next move might be. But since you've returned, the pressure's off David, <laughs> and you get to decide... I'll let you have a think about that while I check everything else. We've stabilised our economy, our food and our income. And pretty much the public order. We've also made peace with Gongsun Zan Hun. He paid us an almost 3,000 copper and the, uh, the lads all jumped on the opportunity to get him uh, out of the conflict. I'm all right, Harris. Um, I'm incredibly busy in the last couple of weeks uh, with the whole moving house thing. Um, I had to go down to Colchester, as most of you know, to sign my paperwork for moving into the new house. I was down there for five days. Um, it was it was fun. Um, did some stuff. Went and saw a hockey game yesterday uh, in Chelmsford. And I am probably going back down on Saturday to hopefully move in. Um... So I might as well say this now. I'll probably say it again at the end of the stream. I'm hoping the next... Well, the next um, Three Kingdoms stream will be Wednesday this week. Because that will be completely unaffected. I'm not going anywhere on Wednesday. What I'm hoping is, after that, it will be Monday again. So it will be essentially on track. But I don't know what the internet is like in the place that I'm moving to. So it could be absolute garbage. It could be to the point where I can't really even stream... Think everybody please keep your fingers crossed that that won't be the case and we'll be able to stream. If we are able to stream I should be settled by Monday so if it's possible with the internet we'll be doing it. If it's not possible with the internet it could be a while before you see another stream. So I don't know how it's going to go. No there's no tributary. I'm sorry. I, I, the... The lads, the, the council, were just like, nah, let's just peace the fuck out and get some cash. See, as David puts it, he was going to fuck us wholeheartedly, which sounds quite um, pure, I guess, but I don't think that's what he means. And we are... Don't blame it on them. Hey, they, they were the ones who made the call. So, honey, while you figure out what you want to do in this position, I'll do the uh, sponsored officer spiel again, because I think we've got a few lurkers and a couple of new people. So, welcome, welcome to those of you who may not have been here before or may not have paid attention if you were lurking in the past, which is perfectly fine, uh, to our Three Kingdoms, or Total War Three Kingdoms roleplay campaign. 
uh, where sponsor and officer is in effect for subs followers and at this time still just viewers so you don't even have to be a follower you just have to be in the chat and tell me what you want sponsoring officer basically the officers that make up our faction each one of them has their own name uh they're they're not unique unique some of them are like gan ning and taisha sir and jung jong some of them are npc types with like a few different variations of clothing and like hairstyles and such um but essentially what you can do is you choose their skills when they level up you attempt to guide their career we choose whether they're a military or a civil officer you kind of have to play the game of politics with all the other players that have also got sponsor and officers uh and yeah basically just put your opinion in on faction decisions as well so if anybody wants to do that give me a shout i think at the moment we only have two candidates which is taisha sir and shu rao they're the only unsponsored officers that we have right now but they are there for the taking and uh, if you pick one say you pick shu rao and you think you know what i don't actually like her I'd rather be this Taisha Sir guy. That's fine. You can switch at any time. The only stipulation is you lose uh, the right to make decisions for the one that you left behind immediately. And you just switch on to the one that you chose. See what we've got going on. No tributary. We likely wouldn't have been able to keep fighting the two. It's divide and conquer tactics. We subdue one foe with diplomacy and another with violence. David, do you think it's staying is for the best? I mean, I live in the middle of nowhere, like 15 miles from the nearest town, and I have great internet. Harris, um, they, the guys I'm moving in with actually said to me, we don't have good internet. Now, they're not particularly tech-savvy people, so I don't know what that means. But when I was down there, because I've got my key and I've signed my contract, I technically live there, I just don't have any furniture. Um, so when I was down there sleeping in the spare room, I was playing Sea of Thieves on Xbox and I shit you not, it ran perfectly fine until one point it just randomly started stuttering like crazy to the point where it was practically unplayable. So I don't know if that's an internet thing, whether it was a freak thing, like it really worried me actually in terms of like the future of the stream and the channel and everything. I was like, oh shit, we might be moving into a house that has absolutely garbage internet here. So, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Sponsor an officer equals fuck Shun Yu through a... <laughs> oh, dear. I mean... I'd like to see what Dong Shi does. They can't reach us next turn. No, uh, David's right. They cannot reach you next turn. If you look, because they're both in the river, Dong Shi's movement is either up to there or up to there. Zhang Yen's movement is up to there or up to there. I'm assuming if they force marched, they could move a little bit further, but if they force march, they can't attack anyway, so... They cannot reach you next turn. My concern, as I was explaining to David uh, when you turned up, Hunt, was that Dong Shi could move to there. And then if you guys wait another turn, even if you force marched up this road to withdraw, Zhang Yen's probably not going to catch you, but Dong Shi could. I mean, his force is terrible, but, you know, it swings and roundabouts on whether they could get Zhang Yen into the edge of your circle and then have Dong Shi initiate the fight I don't know let's sit for a turn okay all you gotta do is get them to pitch in for better internet to be fair David if I have to pay for the internet myself I will but the the real issue is I don't know how much time it will take to get it like all sorted out and upgraded and stuff and I missed that it's reform time so we'll do that um Minus 8% corruption. We have 4% corruption in Tai Yuan. So this is probably... It would get us a few more pennies back. Um, to be fair, satisfaction for Sentinels would help improve Tai Shi Tzu's satisfaction. It also unlocks Sabre Infantry, which should be quite nice. And four buildings... Whether we are anywhere close to those, I don't know. Um, what do we reckon, guys? There's one there that reduces building upkeep. I don't think we've got a lot of building upkeep, but it's like the corruption. We've got a little bit right now, so that would essentially eliminate it. Available administrator position, which I'm not sure we super need. 
some military stuff, but it's mostly about deployments. We could unlock cataphracts if we wanted to. Starting rank for melee cav, plus lower mustering turns. Uh, trade agreements, trade influence. There's a few things. Nisty, welcome to the stream. Nisty says go for replenishment. Uh, nothing for public order, David. Doomsday says trade deals need them. I actually believe that we've got a third trade deal right now and just nobody will do, will trade with us. Yeah, so we're only using two out of three. Oh, actually, there's a f there's some maybes on there now. Oh, probably because we've captured Herdong and we now board a Yuen Shu. And because we're no longer at war with Gongs and Zan. We could try and trade with Yuen Shu, but we'd have to give him something. I don't know if getting an extra trade deal is really that important, because it would have to go to either Gong Zan and Liu Bei, who are now in a coalition, and one of whom hates us. So chances are it's just income that's going to disappear when the war starts, which is like the worst possible time for it to disappear. So I don't know, what do you guys reckon in terms of reforms. I'm not leaning towards trade agreement, to be honest.